Don't get me started. You're fat. You're ugly. You're not girly enough. You could be prettier. Maybe you can try and lose a bit of weight. How to market you? Boy or girl? Well, these are just some of the stuff that has been thrown at me as an artist. All these years, I mean, the first thing that I heard being said to me, I think the meanest thing that was ever said was when I was 14. This person said to me, I would like to hear you, but I would never want to see you. It's been what? So many years, I'm, what, I'm 37 now, and it still hurts. Th this is the part of the business that you guys don't hear. What you see is all the glam, all the fame, but what's really happening behind the scenes? This is the real deal. And I think there's two ways to look at it. You either let it break you, or you make, make you at the end of the day. Just be strong, stand up, speak for yourself. Don't let them speak to you that way. Always fight to be who you are. And never, ever, ever let it affect you. I mean, it will still affect you at the end of the day, but don't lose who you are. Don't lose sight of who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have with us Osa Esso. You said Wang it right. Wang? I got it right. The yes, first you time. got it right. So Osa Wang. Yay! Wang. Yay! Yes, Wang. I don't know. People call me. I've heard so many pronunciations. Um, Assy, Ass Wang. So, but you got <laughs> it right. Osa Wang is the right way to say it. Assy is the worst, I suppose. Um, I would say Ass Wang is pretty bad. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but like, I mean, can you blame people? It's spelled A S E. What do you like? I would have pronounced it the same way. So, well, I, I get the same problem. Like, I, I thought Olinda was simple enough, but I get. So, do people call you Ollie or Olinda? Everybody calls me Ollie. Okay. But sometimes I get people who come to me and say, Oh, Orlando, Orendas, <laughs> Orinda. Orlando, ah. <laughs> yeah, Orinda. It's like, Oh, Linda. How hard is it? Oh, Linda. Right. But see, but there can only be one. If you have a name that's not easily pronounced, you know there can only be one ass wang in the world. <laughs> that's I true. I mean, there they can't be another ass wang, so. Oh, I get the, the, the one that I cannot stand. Sorry, I, no, no offense. They always come to me and say, Oh my god, Olivia Ong, oh, I love your music. Olivia what? Olivia Ong. She's another oh singer. And I'm like, I'm Olinda Cho. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the, the name all wrong. Does that piss you off when people like recognize you as someone else? Of course. And Isn't it, like, it totally upsets me. Who do you get recognized for? Well, I get recognized as this um, Thai actress and like, no offense, um, her name is Pinky and we do look alike. We look like sisters. Um, but God damn it, it's like, I'm not freaking Pinky, man. Like, I would literally show up and at my own premiere, oh, Pinky! And I'm like, dude, did you just watch the same movie that I was in because I'm not Pinky. And I'm like, that's so, like, really? It, it almost gets insulting in a way, but then you're like, okay, well, what, what can you do? You but they're pretty I mean? people at the end of the day, right? I mean, they're nice people, okay. so you can't be, like, mad. Yeah, we go, sorry, we got carried away with our names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what the big question for me is, how do you get into the industry? Because what I remember you as was a model, right? Yeah. And now you're an actress in, in Thailand. Singapore I know, it's so Thailand. bizarre. Um, and the crazy thing is I'm not even Thai. But I put Pasa Thai Dai. I can speak Thai now. Which is crazy because um, I went, I literally started working in Thailand about 10 years ago. Um, started in Singapore. Uh, I am not, I have no high school degree. I didn't finish high school. I dropped out of school at uh, 15. And uh, I remember my dad being like a very typical, you know, Hainanese dad was like, my daughter's going to be a doctor and she's going to be a lawyer. And I was like, nah, I'm going to go get tattooed and go to like Thailand and go to like beach parties and, you know, do a lot of horrible things. Um, drove my parents crazy. Um, and then came the big boom of like, <clears throat> dad, I am going to be a model. And my dad was like, absolutely not. Um, if you're going to be a model, uh, I'm going to give you a house to, to live in. I'll give you a roof to stay in. I'll give you, you know, food to eat, but I'm not giving you any money. Mm. So I started working in a bar, just like greeting people to come into the bar. In Singapore or Thailand? In Singapore. Okay. And uh, Russell Wong, the photographer, uh, Singaporean photographer, came in and was like, you know, what what are you doing here? Like, you you don't you don't need to be here. You should be a model. And I was like, this guy's trying to pick me up. <laughs> 
Like, I'm 15, and like, this guy is just like wrong. Um, it actually turned out that he was my neighbor mm. at uh, Holland Village, and he actually came over and spoke to my parents and said, you know, she can't just not do anything. Like, if she wants to do something, let me help her. And till this day, he was the one that got me where I am today. So I started off in Singapore, uh, did spin for Media Corp, and then decided, well, I'm going to go to Hong Kong. I was in Hong Kong for about eight years, worked with like great people, mm. and then um, got scouted to go to Thailand. But and they, why, why Thailand? Or no, it's, it's the craziest thing ever because I literally did a shoot uh, for FHM, and I used to have the biggest problem seeing this that my career started by two things, Russell Wong and FHM. Nothing wrong with that. What's well, wrong with that? Yeah, like... I wish I started off FHM <laughs> and seriously. I started off, you know, shooting FHM. And that was like another like crazy thing for my parents. They were like, oh my God, my daughter's not only a model, but she's a bikini model. How old were you? I was 18, 19. Okay. Um, so I started shooting for FHM and Thailand picked up the cover and next thing you know I get a phone call to my manager in Hong Kong and says well um Ass Wang won an award in Thailand and they're like well her name's Asa Wang and um I think this is a prank because uh she's not Thai and why would she win an award in, in Thailand and mm -hmm. they said well for sexiest Asian um by FHM so I was like get out like this is like this is a prank but it turned out that I actually won and then the next part was, we're going to put you in a movie. Wow, just like that. Just like that. And I was like, uh, I don't speak Thai. And they're like, it's OK. You just need to stand in the movie. Just stand there and just look pretty. And I was like, oh, OK, so like a hua ping. OK, I get it. But you know what? I was like, I'll do it. I stood there. I had one word in Thai. Which was? Iba, which is like a really <laughs> bad word. But that was my word. And I was like, you know what? you've got to eat shit to get somewhere. Especially if you're going to be in a foreign country, you can't expect to be on the top straight away. Mm. I stood there in a nurse's outfit with the word Iba. <laughs> and that movie became so big that when I was walking down the street, people were literally like, oh my god, so I like Sai was the name of the movie. And they're like, Iba. <laughs> and I was like, I must have done something right. OK, I did something right. And then I started working in Thailand. I mean, I'm grateful. You've got to basically, I mean, you've got to start somewhere. But, but some people spend years and years like trying to, you know, mm -hmm. and then you get Iba, and then hey, But you on, know man. what it was? It was because I wasn't looking for it. I realized like when you look for stuff and you put pressure on yourself, for, Tha for Thailand, it was like, I never thought I would make it in the Thai market. I didn't, I mean, I'm not even Thai, you know. Right. So for me, when that happened, I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll take it. And then, boom, it was like, it just came so naturally. I think you're the only Singaporean that made it there. I think I'm the only, as of right now, I think I'm the only non-Thai in mm. the entertainment industry, which is a plus and a minus because it's a plus because at least you get put in your own kind of box and you're like, you're alone. Yeah. Um, and that makes you different. But then it's kind of a minus because when you get scripts, it's like I have to hunt you ping in like the script. Oh. And I can't read Thai, so I literally sit with like a language coach with me, and she's like, she'll read the script for me. I'll get my manager to sit there, and it drives her insane because I'll get her to sit opposite me, and she has to read the whole script from start to. But to you finish. get a lot of shit because I'm sure. No, I get laughed at all the time. I mean, like I'll mispronounce words and I'll say stuff, and like, but then they already know that I'm not Thai, so they give me that allowance. But I've literally learned how to laugh at myself Good. because. <clears throat> if you can't laugh at yourself, you're literally going to die in this industry. At first, I used to be so self-conscious about it and be like, oh my god, I have to pronounce everything right. But, I mean, I've done so many mistakes, and I still do mm. um, mistakes live on TV when I'm being interviewed. Like, I literally swap from English to Thai, from English to Thai, and I've been, I mean, I've been slaughtered by the Thai press for saying the wrong words sometimes, and it comes out as being rude. Oh. Um, but then it's, it's, it's not me trying to be rude, it's literally me trying to speak the language but I make mistakes. Yeah. You know, but I mean at least you try. Correct. I think the most important thing is to just try at the end of the day. If they love, they love whatever, love with them. Love, you know what I mean? Th and you know what? That comes with age, I realized. Because when I was a lot younger, I would always want to, 
I would want everybody to like me. Like, I want everybody to love me. And, oh my God, if they don't all love me, then it's a bad day. But then with age, you realize that, wait a minute, I'm not for everybody. Yeah. Like, in fact, in this industry, you have so many haters. Correct. You have, um, I mean, you have so many users, takers. There's so many bad people in this industry that you learn that, wait a minute, I'm not going to be for everybody. And those everybody might not be for me either. Correct. We're just like everyone else. We all have our feelings. We all have... We all have to put in some kind of In fact, of we might even be crazier than everybody else because we have so much pressure. I think so, because you have to kind of be perfect, right? Actually, for you, the pressure is, 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 is more, is even more than me. I'm not the... Really, though? I mean, because you, you, you're still being put on that platform of perfection. And one little mistake that you make... I mean, you could wake up with a sore throat tomorrow and decide... Toy. You know, okay, yeah, I shouldn't say that's a horrible thing. Like, see, there we go. Um, no, but really, like, if you got sick one day and you had to go and perform, commitment to your fans that you want to go out and you want to sing for them, but you might not be at your best because you're sick. Yeah. So you make one little mistake and it's going to be like, ah, oh, she was lip singing and ah, oh, she's not that good anymore. And like, and that stuff hurts, you know? Yeah. But then it's like, people need to realize that you're just like everybody else. You're going to wake up and have a bad day. Correct, correct. I guess nowadays in the industry, everyone sees like the the, be the beautiful side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like oh, the the fame and the glory. Mm -hmm. But what's the back end story? I mean, you went through recently. You just went through something, right? I mean, there's so many backstories. Um, I think it's like like what I was telling you um, earlier on. It's a really interesting time for women right now because mm. I feel that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been very much a man's kind of world. Um, I can't speak so much for the other industries, but I can only speak from what I've experienced, and I'm sure that it's happening in other you know, industries, whether you work in an office or in a 7-Eleven or a Starbucks or whatever it is that you do. Um, there's always going to be this kind of fear, I feel, that a man needs to be a man, and the man wants to be that man, and the women should just kind of like. I'm not saying all men are like that. Yeah. But I feel that sometimes there, there are those. There's a few. I mean, yeah, bags, there are. Yeah. I mean, there's every kind of man out there, you know. But um, it's kind of bittersweet because you have people tell you, well, you know, there's no, there's no industry like entertainment industry. I mean, all the stuff that goes on, and you know. I had horrible things said. Um, you What's know. the worst? What's the worst thing? Oh that well, was I've had thing? someone say that if you're in the entertainment industry, then you're a prostitute. So when that's being said or that's being kind of like put on the table, then you can't help but to feel like, okay, let's get one thing straight. I'm sure there are certain girls that are willing Correct. to do that. So let's not let's not just bash men all around because I will say that there are women out there that condone this kind of behavior, mm. and when you condone that kind of behavior, men will be like, hey, it's okay. Yeah, once it's okay, well, it's totally should be okay, okay yeah. for you to come over here and like, you know, let's throw it down because you let me throw it down once, let's keep doing it. Yeah. So there are women out there that allow that. So are they 100% to blame? Mm, I wouldn't say 100%, but there are many women out there that are not willing to do that. And just by being propositioned to do something like that or be put in a situation to do something like that, you also kind of think, well, wait, am I here? because I'm talented? Or am I here basically because you think that I'm willing to, you know? And that, that's kind of like an ego boost for yourself too, because you're like, wait a minute, I spent like half a day going through the script trying to understand it, and I walk into a room and it's just like, hey, like, what kind of guys do you like? <coughs> it's so you study the script for nothing, like if I know I yeah, just, basically. just go in you know, with an extra push-up bra and then be all totally sexy and I'll... I'll, I'll well, I mean, the thing is too, it's like, if I did walk into a room with a push-up bra, does that give you the right to treat me like, like a slut? Like, do you automatically think that because I'm dressed this way that I should be treated that way? Mm -hmm. And that's like a huge discussion that people have too. And it's like, just because I want to dress sexy, does that mean that I should be treated any differently? But women Trust should be me. able to dress however they want to exactly. dress. Exactly, and I've definitely gotten my, my fair share of it because it, it was like, well, you shot FHM. You have shot FHM for 10 years, so do you not feel that maybe you got put in that light. I've been brought up with morals, and like you know, I'm very lucky. I've been brought up, you know, in a family that um, allows me to to live a ultimately good life. I don't have to do that. Mm. So, 
going back to like what you said, yeah, like it's a very interesting time now for women because they're able to kind of voice out and be like, it's not okay for you to treat me like that. Um, but it takes a brief, one brief woman to start, right? And then the rest will. Yes, right. and I mean, that's why, like, I would have never been able, I'm going to tell you right now and be 100% honest with you, would I be the first one to have been able to come out and say, well, so-and-so is like this and so-and-so is like that? Uh, probably, if I'm going to be honest with you, no. Because the same reason as why everyone else kept their mouth shut, I kept my mouth shut and was like, if I open up <coughs> that can right now, mm. I don't know what's going to happen. But what was the tipping point? What made you decide, like, okay, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to say it. I'm going to tell my story. Somebody spoke first. And then when you read about it and you go, oh my God, like I have so much admiration and so much respect for that person that did that. Mm. Um, not only because of the work they do, but also like, damn, like that took balls to do that. Like you're up against like some of the most powerful people. Yeah. And you know, coming, I think, from an Asian society too, you are less adaptable to being able to create drama or somewhat stir up stuff. He's like, you know, just be quiet, just just Take let it. it go. Yeah. Um, the Western society is a little bit more like, oh no, you can't treat me like that. Yeah. And you know what? There's nothing wrong like with the Asian culture and the Western culture. We're just different that way. So, you know, for me, I've worked all my life in an Asian kind of um, upbringing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I don't want to be the first to bring this up. Like, you know, it's just going to bring down my family. It's going to bring down other people to you. It, it's like a domino effect. Right. Somebody else brought it up and I was like, you know what? Respect to them. Like, and these people that are doing it have been doing it for way too long. So like you have a story to tell, you know what? I'm going to jump on your bandwagon and I'm going to help you basically so start. You but you, you kind did. of feel braver as well because I was you're, you're so holding another. Scared! Oh my god, I was so scared. Like you can ask like my manager James and Samuel. They were like, "Girl, you need to calm down." And I'm like, "I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Oh my god! Like, what are they gonna write? Like, people are gonna like hate on me." And you know what? Why? People did hate on me. But you're telling I the truth. I got some horrible. Yeah. If they hate you but for you know the what? truth, then so at least it. I can sleep at night because I spoke the truth. So there was a lot of shit said to you after you stood up and told oh the my truth. god i got like oh, i would say the people that i did get the shit for were probably men if men want to give me shit for it then what did you know, they say i got a lot of shit for men and i also got like a lot of um you know kind of like people that i know that were guys that were like whoa are you really gonna go down that and i was like yeah i am like i'm going down it why should why should she keep quiet when it's well i don't truth. think what difference like I would not be able to sleep night at night knowing that, wait, this is happening all, all the time. And you know what? That being said, it doesn't just happen in LA and in Hollywood. It happens in Asia. And you know what? Maybe even more so in Asia if you think about it. Because I know so many people in Asia, we have like a certain kind of, um, I don't want to go back to maybe culture, but you know, you've got the mistress culture going back from like going back a bit in time here, but like the Forbidden City where you had like, you know, the- a Asian women are more submissive now. Exactly. At the end of the day, they are more submissive. I mean, okay, if you put a westernized woman and an Asian woman next to each other and you ask both of them, would you be okay with your husband having another woman? Who, which one would you think would be okay with it? It would most likely be the Asian woman that would be, I don't like what's going on, but I would respect it. They will just close one eye. La. They are very good at closing one yeah. eye. Yeah, a Sometimes Western woman close two eyes. would be like... Open two eyes. <laughs> she opened two like eyes. Like you're going down. Like, yeah. like you're going down. There can be one and only one. But yeah, like, you know, it, going back to like... Things like this happen in Asia. Mm. Like I literally, just two weeks ago, was in a situation where I got called out for a business meeting to discuss a project. And halfway through this meeting, I realized, oh, wait a minute why am I here? And my manager that was with me basically just said, look, we're here to talk about work. This is, let's figure out the details. And they were like, well, stay, have dinner, have wine. And I was like, you basically just called me out because you want to sit and have dinner with me. This is two weeks ago, this right? After two weeks ago, straight right after, after the wine interview. thing. Yeah. Oh my God. And Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, tell us more. And then? Honestly, I was literally like how you just reacted. I was like, are you serious right now? Like, I'm thinking maybe per this person doesn't read the news or doesn't know anything, um, but it happened in Thailand, so 
you know, mm -hmm. I think the news was a lot bigger here than what it was in Thailand. Um, called me, it was literally this person gets a hold of my manager and says we have a project for Asa. Uh, we would like her to come in to discuss possibly d endorsing a, a car a car mm -hmm. deal. So they're like, okay, can we have the details? So my manager says, okay, four o'clock at this time, and they go, well, no, we can't make it. We have to make it at six. Um, and they're like, okay. So I don't go anywhere without my manager and my makeup artist in Thailand. So mm -hmm. the three of us go, and I'm like looking, like, wait a minute, like, why are we sitting here at like a dinner table with wine? And like this is a dinner meeting. Like, yeah, what the, are the we, setting is a bit weird. What are we doing right now? Like, I'll take the wine, but like, I don't need to be like the setting is just odd. And then it was like, oh no, it's not a car deal that we're talking about. We might be talking about some kind of um, <coughs> YouTube thing huh? uh, coming out of Vietnam and blah blah blah. And I was like, but that's not why we're here. Yeah. So you don't have a concrete plan, basically. You told me that I'm here to discuss like an endorsement of a car deal, but then when I sit down, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, that's off. Like, now we're talking about something else. Sure. This person literally sat there, and I mean, I can see you're like a rich guy. Like, you got a lot of money, but you need to understand that like, I don't need your money. I'd I rather be drinking beer at the curbside. I'll take side. your wine, <laughs> but like, I don't need your money, you know? And, and your so, food, yeah, keep it. Yeah, but literally sat there and was like, oh yeah, I know this and I know that person, I know this person. I was like, well, that's good for you. You know, and we sat and then we said, okay, well, um, we need to go and we left. Oh my. Yeah, so these things happen all the time. But it's like two weeks right after the, the Weinstein thing, it's like... It's yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, hey, hello, you, you sell or what? It still happens and it, and I, I, it will still keep happening. In, and. I don't, I'm quite sure that you know this has been going on in the in the in the entertainment industry for so long now that it's kind of good to let people know what kind of shit women get. In but this but industry. it's sad because sometimes you don't know how to leave without offending the person, but they have already offended you. Right? I've also come to a point in my career where I'm older now, so mm -hmm. if I offend you, then I'm sorry you feel that way. Whereas then before I'd be like, oh, I don't want to offend this person. And exactly when you're you younger. Know, you, you kind of... You want to make everybody happy. Yeah. But when you're older, you're just like, you know, you know what? I, you know, like, I don't need this. This is bad vibes and goodbye. I guess karma will get them at, at the end of the day. But you are a strong person, you see. That's why you can fight back. But there are people that go through what we went through, right? Mm -hmm. And they are not as strong, you know? I mean, if you think about it, there's, if someone tells you, well, I just, you're, you're so ugly, I just want to hear you sing, but I don't want to see you. I could end up being like some plastic surgery freak, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, and there are. They are. And um, it's sad because like, I feel like those people, you know, they, they, that's why we need to speak out. This mm. is like why I'm saying it's such an interesting time now for women because we need to sit and speak out and be like, by the way, those FHM covers that I shot, like, yes, I worked out and I was fit for it, but do not do you not think that it had something to do with the lighting mm. and the scenery and the makeup? And like, they took a, there was a huge team behind that. I didn't walk out the house, mm. you know, with like bronzer all over me and like, yeah, like it did, no. <laughs> it took a huge team, you know, and people don't know that, which is why I think it's so good now to be able to like, for celebrities to be able to speak out and be like, well, um, What's real, what's not real. That was Photoshop, and uh, that was the lighting, and that was like, just keep it real, because the more you don't, like, you, you're possibly damaging people out there thinking that you're this perfect human being. Trust me, I would love to be perfect, but I know that's not gonna happen. I don't understand, because I'm the kind of, oh yeah, hey, you got a very nice nose job, eh? where, where do you do it? Eh? And mm. then they're like, no, I didn't. It's like, of course you did, you look completely different from the last time. Right. Oh, sometimes it's the boobs. Yeah. It's like, come on. Like, no, I didn't get a boob job. Yeah, and it's like, okay, I was, was born like this. Yeah, I used to get a lot of shit for um, like fake boobs too. You know, people be like, when I was super young, they're like, oh, you got a boob job. And I'm like, well, if I w did, I would say so. But my mom is Swedish, so. Okay, so. I got it from my mama. <laughs> yeah. Asa, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And now we're going to move on to the next segment of, of the talk show. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you, have you ever questions? And you oh can ask me. My. So you can find out for sure if these are real. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm scared. All right, let's go for it. You game? I'm game. Let's okay. go. Let's go. 
Okay, just now, we decided to play Would You Rather. No, no I have never. never. <laughs> but now we've changed so it to Would You Rather. Yes. And for some reason, this crazy girl wants to up the I game by it, playing with this mouth guard, okay? So because I've never done it before. Okay. So I don't even know how to put these on. This, this side. Goes in. Yep. First, I will ask her a question. And then she will... Uh, it's quite a, I'll it's ask quite her a yes or no answer. It's an offensive question, I usually... And then, or quite controversial. And then she will have to answer. Okay. okay. Let's do this. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not painful. It's so painful. Can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Chin sui. Your teeth are so chin sui. What does that mean? <laughs> For clippy. Oh, thanks. Damn, this hurts. All right, so shall we start? Okay. I go hard, right? Yeah. I can't go hard. Don't call her. You can't call her. Out. Out. Okay. <laughs> okay, first question. <laughs> would you rather have golf? Huh? Would you rather have golf? Okay, or golf? A golf? Okay, go golf. Golf? Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, growing out your forehead, color your eyes. Okay. Or would you rather have a dick for a nose? I think I would rather have. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would rather have a golf. <laughs> Wow. Going out of my head. Then a dick for a nose. Really? Yeah. It's true. I I also get the golf. Okay. Uh, would you rather uh sleep with two people in one day, or have a threesome in one day? Cookie going on gate. What? <laughs> I would rather see a cookie girl in one day. You would rather see a two separate people in one day? Yeah, one at a time. A, a, and a guy. One at a time, not <laughs> at a guy. <laughs> okay. A cat swallow. Okay. Would you rather pee on yourself in public once every day? Pee on myself in public once every day. Okay. Or shit on yourself in private. Once a day. Shit on myself in higher? Yeah. Shit on myself in higher? Why are you shit on yourself now? I, yeah, but at least it's in higher. Nobody can see me, right? Like, <laughs> if I shit on myself in public area, you know, I'm just gonna be like, yo, this girl has a holler. Okay. Okay, now you go. Uh, I have a really, really, like, bad question. Okay, go for it. So I'm totally going to put you on the shot here, okay? On the shot. And I really don't know how a lot to ask this question, I'm going to just do it. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather sleep with your ex <laughs> again or sleep with <laughs> Get the first question. I can see it's two people in one day, right? No, I, I mean, you told me to ask if you have to hit. And then just explain why in a nice way. Like, why would you choose that? Okay. Would you rather have straight long hair growing out of your armpits? Okay. Or quilts growing on your head? I would rather have straight long hair. Long, no, it's long. You cannot shave my hair. Just like this long. Or oh, quilts on my head, is it? Yeah. This. This hair, girl, I'm good. Uh huh. Or, or, or you got curly hair. Oh, I have. Girl, no need. Girl, no need curly hair. Ah, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I think I'd rather have curls on my head. Yeah, why? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure every girl kind of has in a way, right? But this one can, <laughs> this one can cover. Yeah, I feel like curls are like that could be your, like your kind of hair anyway. Curly hair on your head. Yeah. Okay, I can't feel my mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on with me, have a job with me.